Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, in Berkshire, there are signs that this year the Windsor Castle chefs may have started on the Brussels sprout recipes a bit early. <laughs> <laughs> In a bid to boost the public's confidence in the government ahead of the vaccine rollout, there's a blow for Boris Johnson as he sews his tie to his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and in Newcastle, one man mishears the announcement that if you have scotch egg with every pint, you can stay in the pub. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian who recently tweeted every time David Attenborough is referred to as a naturalist, I picture him completely nude. A dangerous joke for a comic with his surname. Please welcome Phil Wang. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a scientist and broadcaster who predicted something like COVID in her 2017 programme, Contagion, the BBC4 pandemic. Though there was one flaw in the show, no one watches BBC Four. Please welcome <laughs> Dr. Hannah Fry. <laughs> and we begin with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Phil, you have a look at these. No children in there. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Santa's coming and he's bringing needles. <laughs> ah, that's him retraining. New job, Ricardo. <laughs> Let's go. And he's got bagels. He's got bagels. That's why he's running in a funny way. <laughs> <laughs> this is more good news. It is. The Pfizer vaccine is being rolled out. I think the people who are going to be saved first are Boris, Hancock and the rest of the cabinet. And I think they're hoping the vaccine will make us forget the rest of the year. And we'll just think, they're amazing. <laughs> Matt Hancock told the Commons the batch testing has been completed for the first 800,000 shots of the vaccine. Shots, shots, shots. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great, great news, but it's, it's not ideal um, as a vaccine just yet because it has to be kept at really, really low temperatures. To keep it that cold, basically, Pretty Patel has to deliver each one by hand. <laughs> <laughs> or just stare at huge batches of it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Van Tam was there for the announcement, doing quite a lot of showing off, wasn't he? Quite a lot of baffling stuff about trains. He loves a mess for, doesn't he, JVT? He loves a mess for. It was a long one, though, it, it wasn't it? It went on for as long as a train ride. Yeah, should we have a look at that? <laughs> the train has now slowed down safely. It has now stopped in the station and the doors have opened. That was the authorisation by the MHRA. What we need now is for people to get on that train and travel safely to their destinations. Those destinations are all over the UK. This train is going to stop several times on the way. It's going to have to reach all parts of the UK. There will be trains that come behind it, and that is all going to take time. <laughs> he, he knows his audience. He's speaking to the United Kingdom, who know not to expect a train any sooner than <laughs> they should. Just waiting for the replacement bus service. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whereabouts are we on the scale of recovery? What did Boris say about that? The centipede has put the first jumper on. <laughs> <laughs> Boris summed it up, telling MPs, is this the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end? Adding, I think we're at the beginning of the end of the second... <laughs> <laughs> Time to bring on the sub, I'd say. Uh, what did the Prime Minister have to pretend to like this week? in the Commons. Tories. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. What uh, the powers of be have done is that they have placed little old Slough in tier three, despite the fact that we have been segregated from the wider region and there are areas in neighbouring London and Essex it, with higher COVID transmission rates. So why does the Prime Minister hate Slough? What, what have we done to, uh, that has annoyed him so much? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I love Slough. <laughs> That's after a slough was placed in tier three restrictions, whereas the whole of the rest of the surrounding area was in tier two. Have a look at this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Boris Johnson has had a lot of difficulty with delivering good news, because usually his MO is delivering bad news as if it's good news. Now he's got yeah. good news, he has to make sure people don't get overexcited. It's as if every time he's delivering good news about the vaccine, he's going, do keep in mind, I am in charge. <laughs> <laughs> So please temper your expectations. There's nothing I can't fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking 
taking that a little bit far, though, with uh, Gavin Williamson, for example, claiming <laughs> claiming the credit for the entire vaccine rollout of the, of the entire world. <laughs> yes. I kind of think with him doing that, I mean, if he's going to essentially steal stuff from other countries, he could have at least had the decency to do it in the British Museum. You know what I mean? <laughs> he said, we are a much better country than every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, and he thinks that because we've got a regulatory authority that delivered a verdict slightly ahead of some other people, that means we're the best in the world. Allowing us to use a vaccine made in Germany. Yes. By some Turkish scientists. Yeah. And manufactured in Belgium as well, right? It's almost like Europe's see. a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Gavin oh, Williamson let is it better go, than... let it go. <laughs> well, we are. <laughs> we are letting it go. What might you need to get into a pub? these days. A substantial meal. That's right, a scotch egg, in fact. Pubs in tier two areas will be allowed to serve drinks only if they come alongside a substantial meal. I read this as substandard meal. <laughs> really? And I thought that covers a lot of pubs. A series of ministers were asked this question and they all gave different answers. Yes. Gove said one thing in one interview and, and something else in another. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's extraordinary. Let's just have a look at this. We've got it chronologically here. Do you class a scotch egg as a, subst as a substantial meal? There does seem to be a degree of debate about this. Um, a couple of scotch eggs is a starter, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> this is a big scotch egg yes. I've got in my hands. Um, is that a substantial meal? Um, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably a starter. <laughs> is it a substantial meal? Uh, a scotch egg is a substantial meal. <laughs> I'm just glad my suspicions have been confirmed that Piers Morgan always has a scotch egg on his <laughs> Do you know what, though, this scotch egg thing, I mean, it just feels like such a smokescreen. I think the, the British public is so easily distracted by silly things. Uh, you know, we're, we're four weeks out from the end of Brexit. I reckon there was a point where they had a meeting, had a whiteboard, and they were brainstorming which baked good they should, uh, <laughs> they should distract us with. Scotch egg or yum yum? You know, what, we, what should we go for? I believe this scenario, apart from the word cabinet brainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the most confusing comment on the whole scotch egg thing was Matt Hancock, whose position was a scotch egg that is served as a substantial meal. That is a substantial meal. <laughs> Which is like one of the Sphinx's riddles. <laughs> Basically, if a scotch egg self-identifies as a substantial meal, <laughs> it's very progressive of them, actually. <laughs> yeah, what have they launched in Japan this week to make COVID more fun? A board game. No. Oh, is it a mutation of the virus? <laughs> 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 uh, that would be fun. <laughs> no. No, Maskland. Maskland? Yes. Mask <laughs> Which is a face mask theme park with attractions, which include... <laughs> An exhibition on the history of face masks. Yeah. That's dreadful. <laughs> yeah. And Father Christmas isn't that thin. <laughs> According to one attendee, I expected more visitors, but it's not so crowded, so it's good. <laughs> People are always saying infection rates are rising exponentially. What does, what does exponentially mean mathematically? You know, this is one of my big bugbears, actually. Yes. People using the word incorrectly. The real answer is it's something that uh, grows by a fixed fraction in a fixed window of time. So, like, doubles every week. Right. So you think other people lazily use it to just mean, ooh, it's getting big? Yeah. 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 I don't I, think that's that. Very I know that. Bloody journalism. <laughs> <laughs> right. So almost every hour, you must just squirm. Go, I, ah, <laughs> ah. I get twice as squirmy every hour. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> what should the public definitely not be doing in their homes this Christmas? Carrying out satanic rituals with their next-door neighbours. Oh, so close. <laughs> oh, singing carols? No, that's tier yeah. two. Well, actually, yes. Public Health England have advised that at-risk people should not sing or play board games. <laughs> well, that's good advice for Alexander, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for nothing, Public Health England. Thank you. <laughs> We've got to redefine singing first. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we're through lots of layers of perspex <laughs> doesn't mean that doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for that. You must have heard his version of Golden Brown. I thought it was yeah. Gordon Brown. No. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, who'd like to see a squirrel drunk on fermented pears? <laughs> there we are. Who, uh, who doesn't want to see it? <laughs> you see what's happened if they don't eat their scotch eggs? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Imagine if the first time you got drunk, you had no idea what had caused it. Yeah, and you saw that in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the great news that the UK is the first country to approve a vaccine. For some, the speed at which the vaccine has been tested and approved has raised eyebrows, but others suffered no side effects whatsoever. <laughs> Weatherspoons have introduced a strict three-pint limit for drinkers, although the latest research from Oxford University suggests that if you drink a half-pint followed by a full pint, you actually get 90% <laughs> more pissed. <laughs> Paul and Hannah, take a look at this. Yes. Are these the new judges for Strictly Come Dancing? <laughs> <laughs> to the man who's probably not holding on to his job for much longer. And there's a horse's ass. I think this is the... Uh... The moment that horses join the Me Too movement. Yes. I don't know where that badge is going. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah. Donald Trump, Melania. Yes. William Barr. Yes. The news that Donald Trump has finally reached the fifth stage of presidential election grief. Acceptance. <laughs> yes. Uh, who's Trump blaming for his loss this week? Everyone. He was blaming this weird thing called Big Dump. Oh, I didn't hear about yeah. this. Big um, Dump. Oh, yes. Let's just have a look at this. I was called by the biggest people uh, saying, congratulations, political people. Congratulations, sir, you just won the election. It was 10 o'clock and you looked at the numbers and I'm sure you felt that way. This election was over and then they did dumps. They call them dumps, big, massive dumps. <laughs> that's Fox News. I'm not, that's the standard of news we're going to get because Murdoch's launching a new channel in Britain so we can look forward to a big dump from Murdoch. He just can't accept the reality of it, can he? He's, he's not even, like, getting angry about just the country of America. He's he saying, we're like a third world country. Almost like forgetting that he's been in charge of that country yes. for four years. <laughs> this place is a shithole. What happened to it? It was all right before. <laughs> <laughs> Who's helped to drag Trump a little bit nearer to one of the White House exits? This week. William Barr, who's made a last-ditch attempt to salvage his reputation. That's right, the Attorney General. John Goodman look like William Barr, here he is. <laughs> Barr fully backed Trump's calls for an investigation into the election result, but said on Monday, we've not seen fraud on a scale that could have affected a different outcome in the election. It's almost as if Rudy Giuliani is not the gifted legal mind he seems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was Trump mocked for this week? Was it his teeny tiny table? His teeny tiny table. Oh, I love his this. His teeny tiny table. <laughs> have you ever been to like a parents' evening at a primary school yes. where you go and sit down with a teacher and you try and have a really serious conversation? And you're just sat on these teeny tiny little chairs, <laughs> teeny tiny little tables. Let's have a look at his teeny tiny table. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's oh. happened is that he's acted like a child for so long that his team are finally like, right, we're going to start treating you like one. <laughs> and first we're putting you on that Fisher-Price table. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't think the removal people have taken away the proper desk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of the press speculated he was given the desk as a prank by a disgruntled staffer, which may be why Trump got so annoyed with this reporter. It's a possibility. They're trying to... Look... Between you people, don't answer, don't talk to me that way. You're just a you're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that way. Don't talk to I'm the president of the United States. Don't ever talk to the president that way. I am the president. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta feel for Donald Trump. He's, this really is the worst of all worlds for him because he he's not only is he no longer the president in a month or so. Until he is dead, he will have a secret service detail around him all the time. So he can't even go back to his life of crime. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he keen to get a pardon for before he goes? His family, potentially himself. Potentially himself. Although apparently presidents aren't allowed to self-pardon. Well, we don't know, because no-one's ever tried it. He's also said to be considering a pardon for his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Yeah. Who just go, can go back and haunt that Victorian stairway. <laughs> <laughs> What's Joe Biden doing here? He broke his foot while he was playing with his rescue dogs. That's it makes right. me so happy that even Joe Biden's injuries are wholesome. It's like, it's just very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing with his dog, Major. Oh, there you look. Are. That I is mean, to be fair, Major does look like he's up for a scrap there, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> What's the big fear for Biden now? What, the dog won't make it? Well, no, no, the dog's fine. The injury could take six to seven weeks to heal, so he might have to wear the boot for his inauguration in January. Biden was keen to shake off any fears about his health. If you think I'm out of energy, think again, kiddo, he told one young 74-year-old supporter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did Melania do at the White House this week? Carve another number into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I know she got in the Christmas spirit. Let's have a look at this. I 
I think she's just looking for an escape route. <laughs> <laughs> um, why is her Christmas spirit so surprising? Oh, well, this is the phone call she had with a friend of hers a couple of years ago where she expressed a view of Christmas which didn't fit in with that lovely advert there for John Lewis. No, exactly <laughs> right. Earlier in the year, she was caught on tape saying, who gives a fuck about Christmas stuff and decorations? But I need to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and finally, a bit closer to home, uh, would you like to see the Christmas lights being turned on in Bridgewater, Somerset? Oh, yes, I saw this. This is good. Oh, this is great. Four, three, two, one. Flawless. <laughs> <laughs> this is another messy week in the messy end of Donald Trump's presidency. Trump is exhausting all legal means to swing things back his way, but the result is now looking so clear and obvious that there's only one thing left that could reverse the decision, VAR. <laughs> Trump hinted he might run for president in 2024 at a meeting of right-wing supporters. According to The Telegraph, many were not wearing masks. Though, in their defence, a lot of them were wearing hoods. <laughs> also this week, Joe Biden slipped and suffered a hairline fracture in his foot while playing with his dog. Biden is currently wearing a protective boot, but the good news is that in a few weeks the boot will be removed so that Biden can fit in his coffin. <laughs> is it? That's because he's old. He's old. Uh, old. It's not that uh, old. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> At, the, uh, <laughs> At the end of that round, <laughs> two points each. Oh, well done. Three, three, three. <laughs> and so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Yes. Fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Paul and Hannah. Sir Philip Green, I believe he is, who used to be uh, in charge of uh, British home stores and various other companies. Um, who have now gone bankrupt. Mm. So it's another nail in the coffin. Uh, not referencing Joe Biden's coffin in any way, because no. that would probably be cut. That would be cut. Keep, we keep yeah. talking about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I mean, you probably could adapt a coffin to include the boot, to be honest. <laughs> being, <laughs> being the President of the United States, they probably just wouldn't give him any old... Well, what are we going to do? We're going to have to chop his leg off. No, no, no. You'd probably sort of have a little annex built onto the coffin. Yeah, they could put the dog in. Yes. Oh, and the dog got... I've got oh, yeah. bad taste until it's the dog. Yeah. <laughs> you can bet oh, Joe yeah. Biden, that's fine, but don't bring the dog Good into this. <laughs> so, yeah, Philip Green. Arcadia. Philip Green. I've got a bit of a mixed feeling about Debenhams, in yes. a way, because, obviously, you know, it's, like, an important part of the British high street. But I sort of think about Debenhams as they were the, the number one shop in Britain in 1950, and I kind of think what they did was, like, 1950, great, we're at the top, let's just keep everything exactly as it is. Let's not change a single damn thing. Mm. And then 70 years later, they're surprised they're behind the times. Well, what's amazing is just how old Debenhams is. I didn't know. I know it's it, years. The, the year Debenhams... The first Debenhams was opened in London, James Cook landed on Hawaii. The, that, that's how... I think he just missed their sale on blankets laced with smallpox. <laughs> um, and in that very same year, Joe Biden entered Congress. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's it. quite old, you know. Is, yeah. is that because he's so old? It's because he's so old. Oh, I believe I bet he's going to die, Oh, I, you, I hope not. Well, if he does, I'm sure they'll make adequate funeral arrangements, don't you think? Good. <laughs> God, I hope with that foot. How did Sir Philip react to the impending disaster for British workers? He didn't care. He's gone his yacht. According to the Daily Mail, he was spotted relaxing and laughing, topless. I thought it was uh, Topshop. <laughs> <laughs> on his uh, multi-million pound yacht, looking for all the world like a bronzed rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> what, was he being turned round at both ends? <laughs> what is Philip Green's wife, uh, Tina, most worried about? And I'll give you a clue. It's not the redundancies. Well, she's going to... to fork up to try and cover the gap in the pension funds. Is she? Is she? Well, so I read. Um, only 50 million a year, though, I think. Yes, only. no, it's not going to cover all of it. Mm. Um, but, it, it's you know, it's a substantial amount. I mean, they took out more money from the company than anyone has ever taken out in any dividend in financial history. Yeah. So they do sort of owe some of it back, I would say. Yes. I don't think he'd agree. The dividend was 1.2 billion, I think. Yeah, that's quite a lot that to take out lot. of the company. Yes. Yeah. Um, according to the Mail, Tina, though, is worried about her husband's health following years of heart trouble. That's right, medical experts still can't find any sign of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, who has unexpectedly opened a gift shop this week? Joe Biden's foot. <laughs> Surprising. No, Highgate Cemetery. Oh, Highgate yeah. Cemetery. You're obsessed, aren't you? Highgate <laughs> Cemetery. <laughs> what can you buy? Replicas of Joe Biden's foot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Highgate Cemetery is opening its own gift shop. It's what Karl Marx would have wanted. Uh, this is the collapse of Sir Philip Green's shopping empire, Arcadia. Philip Green is called Emperor by Mike Ashley, who himself is known as Little Emperor. <laughs> Though, to be fair, he only looks little because he's holding one of those giant Sports Direct mugs. <laughs> Fingers on Buzz's teams. This is a statue. Yes. And you have to guess who it is. I think it's Barbara Windsor. <laughs> I think it's meant to be Mrs Thatcher. It, it looks is. like it, doesn't it? No, they really captured her flair for life. <laughs> I mean... Anyway, there's a debate about whether this statue should be put up in her hometown. Is that right? That is right, in Grantham, yes. It's the news that even as a statue, Margaret Thatcher remains as divisive as ever. It's a pretty tasteless, um, expensive thing to do at a time when everyone's a bit strapped for... Cash. The unveiling is going to cost, like, £100,000? Yeah. I don't, how does an unveiling cost? I don't you know. just need the veil. I know. Like, who's organised this? Dido Harding? Like, how, how do you spend £100,000? <laughs> the added insult is that it's, it's a bronze... I think it's a bronze statue. It means that everything that made a statue is from mines. That's right. The public... The main complaint, as you say, is that uh, the South Castevan District Council has agreed to underwrite the cost of the unveiling of £100,000. Sticking with scary people from the 70s and 80s, yeah. uh, the actor Dave Prowse died this yes, week. Yes, he, he What did he play? What's well, he was Darth Vader, of course, wasn't he, in, the, in, in, the, in terms of playing him physically. He didn't uh, supply the voice. Did you gather what his nickname was on set? No. Filming Star Wars. They used to call him Darth Farmer. <laughs> Well, he did. He had, have, a, he had a Bristol accent, very thick West Country accent. Yeah, so it was oh. like, oh, you, I am your father. You know, it wouldn't yeah. work. Really, <laughs> it wouldn't really. But he spoke all the lines on the film. He spoke all the made a frost. Be Luke, with you. I am your farmer. <laughs> I am your farmer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. What do you mean, thank you? Nobody responded at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's more, apparently... There was more life in Joe Biden's foot in them four months' time. <laughs> 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 It's just desperate. <laughs> I think he used to do an advert for um, some kind of washing powder, in the, a washing machine in the 60s where he would try to wring the, the washing dry. Like a man <laughs> squeezing a joke the whole evening. <laughs> <laughs> if you're attempting to keep me quiet on this subject, you've just made a horrendous error. <laughs> This is the controversy over a new statue of Margaret Thatcher. The statue stands at 10 feet and is made of bronze. Initially, the artist tried to carve it from wood, but he quickly learnt the lady's knot for turning. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication the British Arachnological Society newsletter for fans of British spiders. As a magazine, it's almost perfect. I change it just an itsy-witsy bit. <laughs> That's oh, nice. Look, you can hear our, our audience. Oh, have we got another audience apart from this one here? In a cinema over the record. Are they allowed to drink? Yes, they are. No. They've just got vision. Yeah. Yeah. What? So the cinema was looking at a blank screen? Yeah. Couldn't you have shown them Dirty Harry or something? <laughs> <laughs> With our voices over it. Oh, the drug squirrel! <laughs> of course we'll see the drug <laughs> Let's have a look at the squirrel after too much fermented pear. Let's hear it comes. The squirrel! <laughs> <laughs> That's the best this show's ever gone. Yeah. <laughs> Did you miss any of the Joe Biden stuff? Because I'm quite happy to... <laughs> <laughs> and so to the missing words round, and we start with the Arachnological Society field trip offered a rare opportunity to what? Talk to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> to meet fellow enthusiasts. To talk about spiders with people who will actually listen to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is from the British Arachnological Society newsletter. Spider enthusiasts are quite unusual and look a bit scary, but just remember, they're probably more <laughs> frightened of you than you are of them. <laughs> Next, 2020 National Dog Show takes place under Covid restrictions, but dogs in audience... what? Struggle to connect on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't watch the video of the drunk squirrel until three quarters into the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you are, but I'm out here for you. Uh, uh, National Dog Show takes place under COVID restrictions, but dogs in audience are replaced by cardboard cutouts. 
This oh. week, the audience at the National Dog Show were replaced by cutouts of dogs. Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> but why is that woman in there? That's a, <laughs> that's a bit unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's cutouts of the owners as well. Oh, I see. <laughs> dogs can get COVID, apparently, which is terribly frustrating for them. Imagine how awful it must be to sniff another dog's bum and just smell absolutely <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Next, Obama's autobiography reveals that he thought David Cameron was what? Nick Clegg. <laughs> <laughs> Two small boys in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> a man who had never been pressed too hard in his life. Obama also criticised Cameron for proposing a half-assed no-fly zone over Libya, which also didn't go down too well with the Tripoli branch of the Spider Society. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, 75% of people say they do not want what this mm -hmm. Christmas? Pretty Patel as a boss. <laughs> <laughs> to see their relatives. <laughs> no. Another it... Alexander Armstrong album? I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I take it back. Uh, carol singers. A visit from carol singers. Oh, you're kidding. That's according to a YouGov survey from any year ever. <laughs> and so the final scores are... Ian and Phil have four, Paul and Hannah have six. Oh. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists Ian Hislop and Phil Wang, Paul Merton and Dr Hannah Fry. And I leave you with news that, in London, the government's new elite anti-vaxxer squad covertly deal with chief protester Piers Corbyn. <laughs> <laughs> in Witham, after her neighbour asks when she's going to update her seasonal decorations with Christmas ones, Pretty Patel asks, what decorations? <laughs> And in Windsor, as one woman is spotted on an industrial estate, fears grow for the whereabouts of the writer of the TV series The Crown. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Jamie Oliver, Stephen Fry and the one and only Dolly Parton join the Graham Norton Show tonight at 10.45. Dave's in the doghouse next on BBC One and Denise has some choice words for him. How we love the royal family. <laughs> 30 years we've been on and the biggest response we've ever got is the drunken squirrel. <laughs> 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 I think that is the drunken squirrel. <laughs> <laughs>